here, joined by Ryan, my apprentice. We will be talking today a little bit about how to look at responses to things. Um, when you're in classes or you're, when you're watching our videos or other people's videos, a lot of times what you'll see are little examples of what to do from different positions and all that kind of thing. Now, um, when you're first starting out, it's really tempting to look at these as kind of um, math, math problems. When I'm here, I do this. And if we want to talk about math, we're not really talking about regular addition, subtraction, multiplication, all of that kind of thing. We're talking about percentages. Because everything that we do in free play is a matter of percentages. Something will always have a rate of success and a rate of failure. And we want to kind of train to go for the things that have the highest rate of success first and then kind of prioritize things on the way down. Now, what I'm talking about is things like this. <clears throat> if we look at a particular response or move, we'll say um, it, it will often look like this. Um, we get to a position here, come forward here, like this, and I will get like this. Now, a lot of people say, now from here, I, can, I will do this, right? And then some other people say, well, go over this way, go over here. And all of them are correct, okay? Because there's, there is a right and wrong answer to all of these things, but it's entirely dependent on what's going on outside of them. So if I don't know what he was doing before and, you know, how our little exchange has been, been being played out, I don't really have enough information to know definitively what I'm going to do here in any one, one particular situation, okay? Depending on his habits and his productivities and his... Um, the things that he's doing and his methods during the actual um, exchange or match, all of that is going to change my decision of what to do. Okay, so we want to look at application as kind of a separate thing to training. Okay, there's a lot of things that we do in training that are very, very specific so that they can train one particular thing. And those one particular things that get trained a whole lot, hopefully, are the things that work almost all the time, right? The very, very simple, straightforward techniques are definitely what you want to go for, especially when we're dealing with a one-on-one -on -one type of thing. Now, if, say, I come up over here like this, and he, and he, uh, he uh, takes it up in, uh, say, full moon. So we're here, and he gets up into full moon, right? Now, one of the things he needs to make sure of that his tip is pointing here. If it is not, okay, I will choose something that that tip is going to give me, that's going to give me particular opportunities. Over here is pretty open, right? Because if I disengage and come around, it's very difficult for him to rotate his blade down to get anywhere where I can get there, okay? So again, he, he gets me with full Going moon, this way. right? Now I can go there. Now if he's forward on me like that, I will probably tr I can probably try to disengage and go over there. Either way is acceptable. It all depends on what he's doing kind of before. Now, in training, what we're going to probably be doing is doing a combination of both of those. So he can come in with, with something and I can come up like this. And we can go back and forth if I'm using the same type of technique. Now, we're limiting ourselves to just doing these, these little things, but it's a little bit free, right? So we have a little bit of stuff that we can kind of explore, but it's not enough that it's going to confuse us. It's not like free play where we're going to start confusing ourselves and all that. So another thing that we always kind of encourage people to be very slow and very hesitant to get into total free play um, until they've got a lot of experience kind of 
with their own bodies and with the weapon and all that, and hopefully some instruction from somebody who does have experience and some supervision, because anything can happen. Equipment can fail, people can trip, and, and lots of things. Now, if that's one response, I'm coming in here like this, he's gonna go up into, no, nope, go up into oh. the new moon, or the full moon, okay. right, he goes into the full moon. There we saw that again. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to do that, because when I come up in here, notice how far his blade is off of my line, right? So I come in here, and he can't get around, around. So that is how we train, and why we train the guards, the spheres, and all that. So that when he comes in, you see, my blade is still pointing that way. So when he comes down, go ahead. Okay, it's coming on down. I can just drop my blade and intercept his. Okay, now, Technique differs. <laughs> now, if he encounters me in the same guard, full moon, okay. but I'm doing uh, like a serasu type of type of thing. So I'm doing lots of orbits. My saber's moving all around. Okay. So if I come in here like this, it's got an entirely different dynamic for him. He doesn't have the same opportunities. He's got different ones. He's got to be able to look at those and 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 uh, adapt accordingly, right? Here, he's got the he's got the the, the added bonus of having a, a a blade that is moving around a lot, right? Okay, and that can change the dynamic of of the fight, as you see. Because until he can get a handle on where <laughs> my saber is moving, this fact that it's in motion the whole time is going to make him, it's going to make it less likely for him to get in. Right? Now, it also is going to make it more difficult for me to make a committed attack. Oh. Right? Because I'm I'm really trying to, to to keep this moving. Okay. The other way to go about it is, of course, using those as as lead ups. Right. So here, and that's more of that kind of thing. And again, nice. Okay. So I'm not really looking as these being pairs anymore. But I'm looking as a way to generate force, right? Okay, so even if he, let's say he does the same thing, okay. goes up into full moon, right? Okay, entirely different dynamic. And again, <laughs> right? <clears throat> so just saying do this is not enough. You have to know what's going on. And that's what training's all about. So, when you get into some of the drills, and you get into some of the forms, and you're looking at things, and things don't make sense, remember that these are abstracted versions of what's happening in real life. Okay? <clears throat> if you take them for rote, of course they're not going to work. Okay? But, as you can see, little bits of them can be used in very useful ways in different um, different types of contexts. And that's why we're always pushing to the point. There's a difference between training and application. Okay? Your movements are going to be smaller, they're going to be less thought out, they're going to be more chaotic, just by virtue of the fact that you have an external force trying to come in and force you to do things. Right? You're not going to be able to do what you want to do, right, and not get hit. Okay, so that is the big difference. When you're looking at training drills and forms and solo exercises, these are for skills, specific skills, specific physical attributes, and all of these things go into the big aggregate, which is free play or combat, that kind of thing. Um, but you don't want to get kind of hampered in either. 
either training or, or application. Each has their place and they're both pretty distinct. Training is leading you up to combat. Okay? So it's very easy to see how the things in forms can be applied in certain different ways, but they're never going to be applied just like that because every situation is just a little bit different. Okay, thanks to Ryan for helping me out. Thanks to you for tuning in. Take those little tips. Uh, train hard. Make sure that you've got good supervision and you've got good, uh, um, good partners to do, to do your free play. Make sure you're wearing gear. Get real safe. Believe me. So the money you're going to spend on gear is going to be way less than, say, what you're going to spend on hospital bills and uh, dental work. Okay? Because you can easily knock teeth out. These are metal. They are not soft. And, of course, the heavy grade blades can easily knock a tooth out. Um, probably not going to break any huge bones, but there's lots of other things that can go wrong there. So, practice safe, train up, make sure that you're doing your solo training with a good mindset and you're really, really focusing in on perfection of technique so you can reduce the injuries later on. Okay? Alright, so, see you next time. Happy savory.